Excessive overgrowth of the neurocoli with cavity formation in the gray matter around the central canal of the spinal cord. <coughs> this disease may affect the brain stem. It may affect the brain stem, and this is called sphingobulbia. So, sphingobulbia is when the disease affects the brain stem. <coughs> in syngomyelia, due to excessive overgrowth of neurocular tissue, there is damage to the spinothalamic gland. Damage to the spinothalamic gland. But dorsal column, medial, and discal system remains intact. So dorsal column, medial and discal system remains intact. But there is damage to the spinothalamic tract. There is dissociated anesthesia. Dissociated anesthesia, it means loss of pain and temperature sensation. Loss of pain and temperature sensation while the tactile sensation remains intact. So tactile sensation remains intact, there is loss of pain and temperature sensation. This is called dissociated anesthesia. Due to loss of pain and temperature, the patient cannot withdraw from the noxious film. Patient can't withdraw from the noxious stimulus. And this may lead to tissue damage. It may lead to tissue damage. Now, in smokers who are patient of syncomyelia, they have burnt fingertips. They have burnt fingertips when they smoke, and cigarette, cigarette becomes very small and it burns the fingertips, but they are not aware because there is loss of pain and temperature sensation. This leads to tissue damage. Burned fingertips of smokers is a typical example of this. Now in the upper limbs, there is lower motor type of paralysis starting from fingers and hand. So in the upper limbs, there is low motor neuron type of paralysis or weakness in the upper limbs. It starts from the fingers, hand, and then towards the arm. In the legs, low limbs, there are features of the upper motor neuron type of paralysis. So features of the upper motor neuron paralysis in the legs or lower limbs. The Zelensky sign positive hyperchronia is seen in lower limbs. So this was about the features of the swingo body. Other disease which affects the spinal cord is the tabes dorsalis. Tabes dorsalis. It is seen in syphilis. Syphilis is a disease which uh, spread through the sexual contact, especially the uh, uh, illogical uh, sexual contact. It results into syphilis. In syphilis, the organism 
causes selective destruction of sensory nerve fibers in the posterior nerve root and that is at the entry point into spinal cord. So syphilis organism causes selective destruction of sensory nerve fibers in the posterior nerve root and that is at the entry point into the spinal cord. This disease affects the low thoracic and lumbar segments of the spinal cord. It affects the low thoracic and lumbar segments of the spinal cord. What are the features of the Avis dorsalis? The severe stabbing pain severe stabbing pain in the legs and parts of the thorax and other parts. So severe stabbing pain in the legs, parts of the thorax and the parts of the thorax. There is increased sensitivity, increased sensitivity, hyperalgesia. So increased sensitivity to touch, of course pain, and cold and warmth. So increased sensitivity to touch, pain, cold, and warmth. There are paresthesia, paresthesia, abnormal sensations, say numbness. So paresthesia or abnormal sensation, say numbness, dysmia. And finally, there is loss of different sensation. Loss of different sensation. So loss of pain sensation, sense of proprioception, and other sensations. So when there is loss of proprioception, there is sensory ataxia. In sensory ataxia because of the loss of the proprioceptive sensation. So in sensory ataxia, patient can't stand upright with closed eyes or in darkness. So he will not be able to maintain equilibrium when standing in darkness or with closed eyes. And this is the sensory ataxia. There is loss of muscle tone. There is uh, hypotonia or atonia. Hypotonia there is also loss of tendon jerks, loss of the tendon jerks, say loss of knee and ankle jerks, loss of knee and ankle jerks. And then there is uh, Algi Robertson tube, Algi Robertson tube. pupil constricts during accommodation but fails to constrict during light reflex. So the pupil constricts during accommodation but fails to constrict, fails to constrict during light reflex. So accommodation reflex is present but light reflex is absent. So light reflex is absent, but accommodation reflex is present. Then there is uh, a tonic bladder. A tonic bladder. One of the abnormality of menstruation is a tonic bladder, and this a tonic bladder is due to damage to the sensory nerve fibers from the urinary bladder. So damage to the sensory nerve fibers. From urinary bladder, it results into atonic, atonic bladder. Uh, the bladder becomes distended. Bladder wall loses the tone, and there is overflow dribbling. There is overflow dribbling in these patients of the atonic bladder. So these are the features of the cavis dorsalis. Cavis dorsalis. Uh, next, uh, we start discussion on cerebellum. 
semibellum is uh, the largest part largest part of the hind brain is the largest part of the hind brain that is cerebellum it is present in the posterior cranial fossa present in the posterior cranial fossa covered by dura mater covered by dura mater which is called the tentorium cerebellum so located in the posterior cranial fossa, covered by a layer of dura matter, which is called tentorium cerebellum. Cerebellum consists of two large cerebellar hemispheres. So two large cerebellar hemispheres. Joined by a median verbis. This is the verbis. And these are the cerebellar hemisphere. So, cerebellum is composed of two large cerebellar hemispheres joined by a median, median verbis. Right? There are three lobes of cerebellum. So, three lobes of cerebellum. Anterior lobe. This is the middle or posterior lobe, and this is the floculo nodular lobe. Floculo nodular lobe. So anterior lobe, posterior or middle lobe, and then third lobe is the floculo nodular. There are two important fissures which divide the cerebellum into these three lobes. So two important fissures which divide the cerebellum into these three lobes. The primary fissure, the D-shaped primary fissure, D-shaped primary fissure which divides the cerebellum into anterior and posterior or middle lobe. And second fissure is jugular nodular fissure, which separates the floculonodular nodular lobe from the posterior lobe. So jugular nodular fissure, it separates the posterior lobe from the floculonodular nodular lobe. So these are the three lobes of cerebellum, anterior lobe, posterior or middle lobe, and third one is the floculo nodular lobe. Developmentally, we divide cerebellum into three parts. Paleo cerebellum, paleo cerebellum, neo cerebellum, and archi cerebellum. So paleo cerebellum, neo cerebellum, and then archi cerebellum. Paleo cerebellum is the old cerebellum. It is the old cerebellum. It consists of anterior lobe, anterior lobe plus pyramid and jugula of the bones. So pelvis cerebellum consists of the anterior lobe plus pyramid and jugula of the bones. This is the paleo cerebellum or old cerebellum. Neo cerebellum, new cerebellum consists of the posterior lobe, posterior lobe minus pyramid and jugula of the bones. So neo cerebellum consists of the 
posterior group minus pyramid and jugula of the pelvis. And archicerebellum consists of the mainly the floculo, floculo, nodular lobe. So the archicerebellum is the oldest part, developmentally. So oldest part is the floculo, nodular lobe. So these are the developmental part of the cerebellum. In the cerebellum, on the surface, is gray matter. And it, it forms the cerebellar cortex. The gray matter is on the surface, and it forms the cerebellar cortex. And on the inner side is the white matter. Inside is the eye. Coal is the white matter in the cerebellar hemisphere. Cerebellum can be divided into three parts functionally. So functional parts of cerebellum are lateral zone, intermediate zone, and the vernus. So the functional parts of cerebellum are lateral zone, intermediate zone and the vertus. So these are the functional parts of the cerebellum, lateral zone in each side of the hemisphere, intermediate zone in each side of the hemisphere, and then vermis is the, the median. So lateral zone, intermediate zone, and the vermis, these are the functional parts of the cerebellum. There is a topographical representation of parts of the body in the vermis and intermediate zone. There is topographical, topographical representation of the parts of the body in the vermis and intermediate zone. You see? This is the topographical representation of the body parts. Now in the vermis, axial parts are represented. In the vermis, axial parts are represented. While in the intermediate zone, facial region and limbs are represented. Limbs are represented and facial region is represented in the intermediate zone. In the vermis, axial parts are represented. In the intermediate zone, representation of the facial part and the limbs, facial part and the limbs are represented in the intermediate zone. So from this uh, topographical representation in the vermis and intermediate zone, Uh, efferents are received. So these efferents are, these efferents are from the respective parts of the body. So efferents are from the respective parts of the body, from the corresponding parts in the motor cortex, and from the brain stem, and from the brain stem. So Efferents come to the topographical representation in the vermis and intermediate zone from the respective parts of the body, from the corresponding areas in the motor cortex, and from the brain stem. Efferents from here, efferents from here, go to to the corresponding parts in the motor cortex. So efferents from here go to the corresponding parts in the motor cortex, red nucleus, and reticular formation. So efferents from here go to the corresponding parts in the motor cortex, red nucleus, and reticular, reticular formation. 
So this was about the topographical representation in the Vernis and integrated zone. And then there are connections, affluents and effluents. In the Vernis, in the Vernis, there are 10 lobules. So 10 lobules are present in the Vernis. So 10 lobules are present in the Vernis. So these lobules from the above downward, these lobules are lingular, first lobule, second, third, center lobule. So lingular, first lobule, second, third, center lobule, fourth, Culmen, fifth, deck rib, sixth, central lobule, folium tuber, next, pyramid, jugula, and nodule. So these are ten lobules of the bulbous lingula. First, second, third, central lobule, fourth, culmen, fifth, deck rib simple lobule, and then the folium tuber, pyramid, uvula, and nodule. So these are the are 10 lobules in the vulvus. From above downward, 10 lobules, lingula, central lobule, culmen, deck rib, uh, simple lobule, folium tuber, pyramid, uvula, and nodule. I told you that uh, in the cerebellum, The gray matter is on the outer side. That is the cerebellar cortex. And inner core is the white matter. The white matter. Now in each cerebellar hemisphere, in each cerebellar hemisphere, the white matter contains four nuclei. So four nuclei are present in the white matter of each cellular hemisphere. And these nuclei, these are masses of gray matter in the white matter of the cellular hemisphere. So these uh, nuclei are from lateral to medial side, dentate, emboliform, globose, and fastigial. So dentate, emboliform, globose, and fastigial. So these are the four nuclei in the white matter of each cellular hemisphere. Dentate, emboliform, globose, and fastigial nucleus. Emboliform and globose, emboliform and globose are sometimes called as nucleus interpositus. We were called as nucleus interpositus. Efflens from dentate and boliform globose come out to superior cerebellar peduncle. So efflens from the dentate and boliform globose come out to the superior cerebellar peduncle, while the effluents from the fastigial nucleus, effluent from the fastigial nucleus, these come out to the inferior cerebellar peduncle. These come out to the inferior cerebellar peduncle. So this was about the deep cerebellar nuclei or intracerebellar nuclei. Cerebellar cortex has three distinct layers. So three distinct layers in the cellular cortex. Outermost is the molecular layer, molecular layer. Then is the layer of Purkinje's cells, layer of Purkinje's cells. And then the innermost layer is the granular layer. 
So the cerebellar cortex is composed of three layers, molecular layer, the congestion layer, second layer, and then the granular, granular layer. Molecular layer consists of outer stellate and inner basket cell. So outer stellate, outer stellate and inner basket cell are present in the molecular layer. So stellate, which are outer, and basket cells which are inner. So these are present in the molecular layer. In this layer also dendrites and nerve fibers from the deeper layers also come. So nerve fibers from the dendrite from deeper layers also come into the molecular layer. The second layer is a congestion cell layer. It consists of a single layer of the congestion cell. A single layer of the congestion cell constitutes the second layer. The congestion cells are basket shaped. So these are flask shaped. These are flask shaped, just like a flask, you see. So the congestion cells are flask shaped cells. From the top of the cells, dendrites are given out. Dendrites are given out from the top of the Perkinger cell. Dendrites. And these dendrites pass into molecular layer. So dendrites from Perkinger cell pass into molecular, pass into molecular layer. So these uh, dendrites of Perkinger cells have primary, secondary, and tertiary branches. These are primary secondary and tertiary branch. From the base of the Purkinje's cell, nerve fibers arise. Nerve fiber arise. And when these nerve fiber enter the white matter, the nerve fibers become myelinated. When these nerve fibers from the Purkinje's cell enter the white matter, myelin sheet is added to the nerve fiber. So most of the nerve fibers from the Purkinje cell, these synapse into the cerebellar nuclei. So most of the nerve fibers from the Purkinje cells, they synapse into the cerebellar, cerebellar nuclei. Only some of these can bypass deep cerebellar nuclei. Right? So most of the exons or nerve fibers from the Purkinje cell, the synapse into the deep cerebellar nuclei or cerebellar nuclei. Some of these bypass the cerebellar nuclei and these go to other parts. These go to the say vesticular nuclei. Right? So this was about the uh, Purkinje cell layer, the second layer. The third layer is the uh, granular layer. This granular granular layer. It consists of granule cells. Granular cells or granule cells. This is the granule cell or granular cell. Having scanty cytoplasm and deeply staining nucleus. Having scanty cytoplasm and deeply staining nucleus. Mossy fibers the apron fiber, mossy fibers, these uh, synapse with the dendrites of the granular cell. So mossy fibers synapse with the dendrites of the granular cells. The exons of the granular cells, exons of the granular cells, these pass to the molecular layer. These pass to the molecular layer and has T-shaped ends. So these are called T-shaped ends in the molecular layer. 
So exon from the granule cell pass into molecular layer where these have got T-shaped ends. And these exon, these uh, synapse, these synapse with the dendrites of the congestion. So exon from the granule cells go to the molecular layer where these synapse with the dendrites of the congestion. In the granular layer, there are also Golgi cells. So also Golgi cells. Golgi cells. No Golgi cells. Uh, they are exon synapse with the dendrites of the granular cells. So exons of Golgi cells synapse with the dendrites of the granular cells while their dendrites pass into molecular layer. Their dendrites pass into molecular layer. So the Golgi cells are also present in the granular layer. Their dendrites pass into the molecular layer. While the exon of the Golgi cells, the synapse with the uh, dendrites of the granular cells. So this is the structure of the histology of the cerebellar cortex having three layers, molecular layer, Papinja cell layer, and granular layer. Next about the white matter of the cerebellum. Large amount of white matter is present in the cerebellar hemisphere. So large amount of white matter is present in the cerebellar hemisphere. Small quantity is present in the bones. Small quantity is present in the bones. The white matter contains three types of nerve fibers. 